Hey guys, just thought I'd give you a quick little garden update. Um, I know I've talked about my onions in the last video, but I just want to show them to you again and show you around the rest of what's going on. So, there's the onions looking uh, big and awesome as usual. Uh, pretty proud of these puppies. Um, you'll see the, the tip of this one here. My arm is almost straight out stretched, so that, that tip is every bit of three and a half feet tall. So, that's, uh, that's pretty impressive there. Um, and then I want—I was actually inspired to make the video because of my potatoes here. These are uh, they're red potatoes um, planted from ones that sprouted eyes in the pantry. So I suppose they sprouted eyes. Hopefully they'll hopefully they'll also put on spuds. But I just added soil around these um, Sunday night, I believe, that I added the extra. You know, hilled them up, effectively hilled them up just by putting more soil in the raised bed, and they are just doing absolutely incredible. They're uh, not even two months old. Uh, and then move down. There's my first planting of potatoes. They look pretty crappy in general. I don't know what happened to them. I know they got hit by the frost and that kind of zipped them back. You know, this one's kind of starting to come back from it a little bit, um, but they're just not the same. They're, I don't know what's wrong. Um, and then uh, my strawberries. These are looking pretty good. The two strawberry plants that are over in that corner, kind of, some, one, one or two of those, are the only two that I had left from last summer. Everything else got cooked because uh, I was too lazy to come out here and uh, cover the beds and I didn't, you know, I was going to put shade cloth and never did. I could have dug them and transplanted them and I never did. Uh, too lazy. But anyway, I bought some more this spring. I bought, uh, I ordered some from Gurney's and I also bought some at Lowe's. So the ones I bought at Lowe's are the first ones that are planted more on, you know, right in here and this next row here. And I believe some of these. And then Gurney's starts around here. And then that bare spot is where the second bag from Gurney's didn't make it. So I had, it was like one bag from Gurney's did good. The other one didn't. Uh, I got some weeds in here I got to pull. This thing's getting, got little oak trees trying to grow on my raised beds. And, oh, that's probably poison ivy that I'm pulling up with my bare hands. So I suppose I'll find out in a day or so if I'm breaking out. I got this stupid, this is the only problem I have with sod trying to come up is this monkey grass or whatever it is and this stuff puts out underground runners and comes up in my raised beds. Everything else that's in here is weeds that have just sprouted seeds or they've grown over the edge but that monkey grass somehow always comes up out in the middle of the bed. I don't know how it does it. Um, but So that's it for my strawberries. You can see I got a lot of little ones on but I haven't been doing anything with these strawberries. I haven't been taking care of them. They're probably better. Then again my carrots that you guys know about. My uh, Epic peas that you guys know about. You can see they're getting blown around by the wind. Yesterday they were all leaning this way, now they're all leaning away. And you can see I've got a whole slew of pods there. I got to pick again. The mega cabbage that actually belongs to uh, a neighbor kid. His classroom planted cabbage seeds, you know, just for the sake of learning. And I went over to their house and it was sitting up in the windowsill, sprouting in the pot, and it was, you know, getting all long and leggy and it was looking pretty crappy. And I figured he was going to let it die just because he didn't care. And so I said, well, why don't you come over and we'll just put it in my garden and we'll see what happens. So he came over and uh, he planted it. You know, he helped me plant it. And we, we gave it a darn good planting and it's shown. We put uh, worm castings in around it and we also put on some Texas green sand all in the hole before we planted it. And this thing is just doing, it's incredible. I mean, just a comparison to size, you know, here's my hand on it. And you can see it, it, the, the cabbage head is almost as big as my hand already. And it's showing no signs of slowing down. I mean, it's just wrapping up just as quick as it can. So it'll be ready here in a couple more weeks, I think. And it's going to be a, it's going to be a good one. It really makes me happy. I'm, you know, I talked about how I made my cabbage and I liked it. So I'm looking forward to eating that puppy. I suppose I'll give it to the neighbors, but maybe I'll make them split it with me or something so I can cook half of it. But we'll take a walk on out here and see. Um, there's the compost bins. I've got that one just about empty. So when it's I'll finish shoveling it out and add some compost to the raised beds. I've got some low spots. Um, and then I'll turn that one over into it and then start filling that one up again with, uh, I've got some horse manure that's sitting over there still breaking down and then I'll just start building on it as my, you know, as my regular compost bin, throwing kitchen scraps and stuff in it. See the bee yard, I've started with the mulch. I came out here after dark and that's five bags of mulch that I spread. I've got to get a second rail built where these two hives are sitting over here. I've got to get a second rail built to get these two up off the ground. And then I've got two more that are over. The two that are sitting over there on the ground have got to go on the rail. And then I've got uh, I've got them coming in steady. I love what I do. You know, I'm doing the bee removals on a steady basis. I'm really loving it. See, there's some more comb. I've got just sitting out here for the bees to raw. But 
I, I collect this stuff so fast doing these beer removals. I can't hardly keep up melting it down. I need to get my solar wax melter. It's sitting over there. I haven't used the thing because I'm lazy, but I need to get it working again so that I can passively melt this comb because I just it piles up in buckets on me and starts to stink and then I finally melt it all down one day. But here's my asparagus. I'm really excited about that. I planted six crowns and it looks like all six of them have sprouted. Uh, so this is year one. I'm just going to let them grow. I'm going to let the ferns get big and bushy and do their thing and put all that energy into the roots. I'll keep on feeding them and make sure they do good. And this one actually, this is the first I've seen. This one's sprouting actually a second shoot here. And uh, that one over there has got a second shoot coming up. So, you know, when I first planted them is after about a week and a half, um, two of them came up. I thought, well, that, you know, that kind of sucks, but that's it. I got two. Uh, but then since then, I've just kind of lost track of them. And now I come out here and realize, shoot, they're all six of them up. Looks like that one over there has got a little shoot coming up beside it, too. Um, so it, it appears to be doing pretty good now. I just, you know, just like everything else, I water it when I think about it. Speaking of which, I got to water my tomato plants here. And I really got to get these things put in the ground or I'll, uh, or I'll forget. That's usually what I do. I've got bee balm sitting up there on the deck and bought it two weeks ago. All excited about planting some bee balm and it's still sitting in the pots. But I'll show you my fruit trees here. I mentioned those in a video. That one's dead. And that one appears to be dead. I pruned it back last fall so you can't even hardly really see it. It's just a bush of lantana. But I think what I think this lantana um, outcompeted the trees because the lantana is real drought hardy. It's a real aggressive plant. And I think it probably just sucked up everything around the trees and drained what little water they were getting. I think the lantana took it. So uh, I asked Lowe's about it. They said I had to have a receipt to return them. Uh, I suppose if I talked to the right person, they might let me return them. But I just, you know, it's, it's my fault. I made a stupid mistake, and I should have kept the receipt too, but I didn't. So anyway, oh, and my apple tree. Uh, my apple tree is actually leafing out. There's uh, little leaves coming out. And it, I think it should have done it a long time ago, really. But it didn't for whatever reason, but that's all new growth right there. New leaves popping out. Um, and I've gone through here. This is actually a leaf from last year. So I've gone through and just picked those off, get rid of them. But uh, last thing I'll show you here is my, my pomegranates. I've got pomegranate blooms coming on. So that's really exciting. And uh, my pomegranate trees, they look a little beat up from the wind and the rains that we've gotten, but I think they'll do just fine. And then my grapes, of course. My grapes are pride and joy. This grapevine is just leafed out like crazy. Absolutely crazy. And I've got, you know, going down my trellis here, I've got different variety, or a couple different varieties. A couple of duplicated. So this one on this end is a Concord. And on the opposite end, all the way down there, that's a Concord. And then I can't remember what's in between. I've got a couple of flame seedless and uh, Thompson seedless. and I can't keep up with them. But I did notice in here I had a right here that is a grape flower if you guys didn't know that's the beginnings of a grape flower it looks like a little tiny cluster of grapes and what will happen is each one of those little round balls will actually shoot out what looks like antennas and uh, that's the I believe it's the anthers technically it'll shoot out for pollination and you hardly even see it you know the grapes they don't put on any sort of colorful flower or smelly flower here's another one down here a little cluster uh, right there but they'll put those out for just a couple days and then they'll go back away and you'll think nothing happened. And then you just look at them a week or so later and you'll see you're starting to swell out grapes. So that's cool. My dandelions, or daffodils, I'm sorry, my daffodils. I love daffodils, I don't know why. I had them when I was a kid. I always loved playing with the daffodils in the spring. We have big daffodil bells, beds that just sprouted up volunteering in the yard at home in Missouri. So I'm excited I got them to grow down here. People were saying you couldn't get it to do it, but uh, I got them to do it. And then I've got some other I can't remember what those are. I, I, I planted those from seeds and flowers and finally transplanted them out. So we'll see what they do sprouting up there. And I got the actual the wildflowers, the buttercups. Butterflops look really good back here. And uh, that's actually the only wildflowers I have. I have some other, some other sort of scrappy little purple thing coming up. I've got my blackberry vines you can see there growing up over the fence. The blackberries look really good. Got a couple blooms on them. And uh, even I did have here, these are all blooms that have been pollinated and they're starting to set fruit now. That's the sunflower popping up there, sunflower popping up there. I planted the sun, I planted some sunflower seeds in here just to see what would happen. I figured, you know, they'll sprout and they'll get tall before the blackberries would compete them out. So they should be fine. They're starting to sprout. And you can see down there at the base of that blackberry, it's starting to sprout up a new, new canes for that year. So the plant will fruit on all of these canes here. These are all canes from last year and it'll sprout new, new canes from the ground. 
that'll grow up this year and then they'll fruit next year. So it's a bi, sort of a, a biennial sort of plant, I guess, in that token. But it's a mess out here. That's These are some ones that I got from my father-in-law. So they're, uh, I'm not sure what variety they are, but they're a lot scruffier. They're real tangly. They're just canes twisted all over the place. I really need to get a trellis built for them. And then, of course, I got my birdhouse gourd still sitting in there that I got to come pick up and, I don't know, I guess turn into birdhouses. Um, I think that's all that I've got out here. Just, you know, I'm outside my back fence. There's the rest of my beehives. And, um, yeah, more blackberries. I don't think I have much else to show you. You know, I used to have my fruit trees out here. My daggum HOA cut them down. Shame on the guy that tries to be generous and plant some neighborhood fruit trees. That's not allowed in, in today's world. You can't be generous. You gotta, you gotta be rude and aggressive and selfish and everything else. Oh, I'll show you the one more. Um, show you my pear trees over here. And my citrus trees are up on the deck. They're pretty much all bloomed out. But my yard is just, it's nasty. I can't, I don't pay attention to it. Oh, look at these rose vines. Those rose bushes look really good. They're really, they're, they're really scraggly as far as how thin the vines are, but the and the flowers are really pretty. It's interesting. My camera is picking up on on here anyway. The video looks they look red, but they're actually a real uh, deep pink color in real life. And then this is my my pear tree that appears to be doing okay. Um, these I don't know if that's blight or what. I thought I saw some blight on them last fall, and I tried to prune out everything that had blight on it. But I don't know. It might still be some fire blight on there. But I've got those blooms came out. They bloomed out. They look good when they bloom, but now they look dead. I thought they got popped by a frost, but I'm not sure. Um, and then I do have a couple blooms up here that are still. They still appear to be. Well, they were fresh. They're they're dried up now. I don't know if that means they're done blooming or if they're going to die off too. And then this pear tree, for whatever reason, I don't know. It it hasn't done much. It's got one little leaf here. It looks like it's trying to leaf out. I don't know why it wouldn't. I broke off the twigs, and they're. They're still green, they're still pliable. It just isn't pushing bud. I mean, it's it's five feet from this other one's fully leafed out, so I don't know what's what's going on with that, but uh, that's it for now. I think I've talked long enough, but I just wanted to give you all a little quick update of how things were going and uh, kind of brag a little bit, I guess. So I'm gonna go in the house and eat some dinner. See ya.